Starting now, I'm going to be using Linux exclusively in my day-to-day -day life to find out if 2024 will be the year of a Linux desktop. So up until now, I've been using Linux Mint alongside of Windows in a dual boot configuration, but that ends today. Here I have a clean install of Ubuntu 23.10, and the only thing that I've done so far is install Flatpak and OBS to get the recording done. So why did I choose Ubuntu? Well, like I said, I've been using Linux Mint for the past couple years and decided that I've grown bored of it. I landed on Ubuntu because it probably has the most support of all the Debian-based operating systems and receives updates regularly. It should be pretty stable. So in today's video, I just plan on getting my desktop environment set up, but I plan on doing update videos along the way, showcasing what I'm working on. I also plan on doing a little gaming and possibly even streaming. So stay tuned for that. But for now, let's get into setting up the desktop. So one of the first things I like to do when I have a new Linux install is set up a script to do all of my updates in one command. So if you're not familiar with the way that Linux works is a lot of the times you're updating all of your applications and operating systems through the command line with various commands. Modern operating systems do have a graphical interface that pops up when there's an update, but I still like to do things from the command line for the most part when it comes to updates. And usually that consists of running a bunch of different commands, but I'm going to set up a script that will run all of my update commands in one line. So the way that you do that, I'll go ahead and open up a terminal. I'm gonna make a bash script that will run all the commands for me. So all I have to do is sudo nano usr in and then update. Uh, and the first thing you need to add is your shebang. And then I start adding my commands here. So the first one sudo apt update. Second one, sudo apt full upgrade, hack y, which just automatically says yes, that I want to upgrade rather than prompting me to do so. Sudo apt auto remove, hack y. And then I also have snap installed on here. So sudo snap refresh is a command to update your snap packages. And then the last one, flat pack upgrade, hack y. And then for nano, just control X, Y to save and close. And now the way this works is if you have a file in USR bin, you don't have to actually write out the entire file path when you call that script. So you just have to type, for example, in this case, update, and it'll go through. But first we have to make that script executable. So the way we do that is sudo chmod plus X for executable, and then the file name. So now that we have that file executable, you should just be able to type update and it'll run, go ahead and automatically do everything for me. All right, all my updates are complete. And in the middle of the recording, my dad called, he needed some help on his computer. So I'm gonna download Rust Desk, install that so I can remote in and give him some assistance. Rust Desk, for those who don't know, it's basically like an open source alternative to Team Viewer. And it should be pretty easy to install on Linux. We're just looking for the Debian package here. It does have a flat pack as well, but I'll just do this for now. And uh, the way you install .deb files, you can open up a terminal and you can do sudo apt install and then the name of the file. Press yes and Rust Desk is installed. So most Linux desktop distributions come with Firefox, which is okay, but I prefer something a little bit more privacy focused. So I'm gonna go ahead and install LibreWolf. So LibreWolf, I talked about this before. It's basically, it's a fork of Firefox with some privacy features added and some telemetry and things like that removed. Uh, no telemetry, content blocker, just automatically installs you block origin, which is cool. Um, has some other tweaks in it that help reduce fingerprinting on the internet. Uh, installation, uh, let's see, Debian based. This is the main repository. So I'm actually pretty sure that they have a flat pack. So I'm going to install it that way. Let's see, they have app image. Oh, here we go, flat pack. <clears throat> So just got to run this command. 
flat pack and saw flat hub libro of community looking for matches do you want to install yes tells you all the things that it's going to do yes and i like flat pack because it uh kind of sandboxes everything so it's a little bit more uh secure uh, especially for a browser it's good All right, so LibreWolf is now installed. Uh, and sometimes LibreWolf doesn't work um, or Firefox doesn't work and need a Chromium base. So I'm just going to go ahead and install Chromium. I'm going to do Flatpak also. From, uh, install Chromium from FlatHub. Chromium web browser. Flatpak is all flathub org.chromium. Another terminal. Same process as LibreWolf, essentially. And Chromium is also installed. And why not? Let's do on Google Chromium as well. And Google Chromium again, same thing. Grab the install command. And now on Google Chromium, it's installed. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be doing some gaming on Linux as well. And probably the best way to do that would be through Steam's Proton compatibility. So I'm going to go ahead and install Steam for us. Let's see, Steam, install Steam. It automatically selects Linux based on my user agent. And here's that same thing with the dev file. We can go ahead and open that file location, open up a terminal there, and then sudo apt install Steam. Oh. Uh, for those who don't know, this little dot slash means like the current directory that you're in. So this is essentially saying download slash Steam latest dev my password go ahead and hit yes to continue steam also has a flat pack but i've had issues with that in the past so i think i'm just going to stick with the dev file for now uh, i usually try to stick with flat pack things if i can just because i like that sandbox uh, provides a little bit of an extra layer of security there but steam should be fine all right let's check to see when you first run Steam on Linux, um, oh look, it even asked me to start. Okay, but uh, it has some other things that it needs to do once it's been installed. Uh, so that's what it's saying here. The package cache seems to be out of date. Press return to update the list of available packages. So I just press enter, enter my password, and press return to proceed with the installation. Yes. Press return to continue. And it looks like it is trying to start now. All right, and that took a little bit of time, but Steam is now installed, so I'll just get that signed in, and then uh, I'll be all ready to start gaming. All right, so the last thing I need to do, and something that I haven't done before, is try and find some sort of video editing uh, software that works on Linux because I'm going to have to edit this video that I just recorded in order to upload it. So we'll see. I'm just going to show you kind of what I do. Um, oh, why would I open Firefox if I have uh, LibreWolf installed? Um, but this is just kind of what I do if I want to research something for Linux. So I'll just do video editing on Linux site, Reddit dot com because reddit has all the answers what's the best video editing program for linux so let's see we have some called open shot right, let's look that up aden live that guy mentioned open shot again and shortcut Uh, 
Let's check these out. Open shot. Free open source video editor. Pretty good. Cross platform and open source is always good. 100% free and open source. Very good. Uh, let's see. Features maybe. Talks a lot about anim animations, which is not really helpful to me. Let's see what it looks like. That's important. Main interface. Uh, it looks a little dated, I'm not going to lie. But if it works, it works. I've seen that video before. Okay. Well, it's an option. Let's see. Kden Live. I think I've actually heard of this one before. Oh, that looks way better. <laughs> Check the about section, maybe. Acadian Live is a community project which aims to deliver a free and open video editing software application to allow everybody to produce quality content in order to increase the democratization of the media. All right. Well, I think I get the idea. Um, it's an open source video editor. It looks pretty good. Um, I mean, it looks just as good as Adobe, in my opinion. Um, and it's open source, so that's all that matters. Let's check out the shortcut. I think I'm liking this K... I think she called it KDN Live. Um I think I'm liking that best so far, but let's check out Shortcut. It looks pretty good too, actually. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, these both, they look pretty similar. Um, the features. Okay. I imagine it's probably open source. Did I? Oh, yeah, open source. <laughs> okay, well, it also has a flat hub. Um, okay, I like both of these. Let's try this KDN Live. I think this one looks the best so far. Check out how to download that here. They have a flat pack. Let's try that out. love me some flat pack i know some people probably don't agree it's bloat or whatever but i love it and if this turns out pretty good i'll probably make a full video on it um it does work on windows as well so it'd be good for other people who are just looking to do some editing but don't necessarily want to pay those giant license fees and they want something that's open source all right, KDN Live. Ooh, looks good. All right. Uh, let's do new. 1080p, 60 FPS, sure. Uh, I guess we'll do two, right? Leave it default. All right, well, that's all that did. Sequences. Add an intro. Here, video one. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, automatically separates out the audio, so that's good. Let's see how it looks. Starting now. I'm gonna... Cool. I think this might work. Let's see, how do I cut it? Uh... Well, I'll give it a try, and if this video is somewhat edited, then it'll be done on this. All right, so I just want to get a quick update on this KDN Live. Um, just finished editing the video, uh, at least until I add this part to it. Um, but it was relatively easy. I'm not super advanced in my video editing, so I just basically did a bunch of cuts and drag stuff together. Um, and this worked perfectly for that. And I'm sure it would work great for other people who are just um, amateur 
you know, YouTubers or whatever like that, uh, that aren't doing any crazy heavy editing and it might even be able to do all that crazy heavy editing stuff. I just don't know enough about it, uh, to go into it. Definitely like it a lot though. Uh, might do a video on it. Uh, we'll see, but that's it for today's video. I appreciate you guys sticking around watching and coming along with me through my Linux only journey for 2024. This is a bit of a different style than what my videos normally are. I hope you enjoyed that as well. Just sort of me hanging out, talking, sharing my screen. Stay tuned for those gaming videos coming out soon, showing you that Linux works great for gaming as well, and uh, maybe even streaming. So appreciate you watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.